This is Twit. So, um, any users of LibreOffice and, it, Apa- yeah. Yeah. and Apache's Open Office uh, should update. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, there was a classic path traversal vulnerability in those. Uh, that just It's funny how that's like always bit us. The idea of dot, dot, slash, dot, dot, slash, dot, dot. It's sort of a clever hack, but boy, has it caused problems historically. Uh, a security researcher, Alex Infuhr, has discovered a severe remote code execution vulnerability in both of these open source office suites that can be triggered just by opening a maliciously crafted ODT, that's the open document text file format, the attack relies on exploiting, uh, as I mentioned, a directory traversal flaw, uh, which has a CVE 2018-16858. It automatically executes a specific Python library bundled within the software, Libre, both of these office suites bundle their own Python interpreters so you don't have to have one separately installed. It's there. Um, and by mixing a white colored link with an on mouse over event uh, and a, like turning the whole page into a link, you, he is, he's able to get this thing to trigger. Uh, so all it requires is that a user open a, the, one of these maliciously crafted documents and bad guy's code runs on your system. Um, uh, he wrote in his disclosure that the Python file named pydoc.py that comes included with LibreOffice's own Python interpreter accepts arbitrary commands in one of its parameters and executes them through the system's command line or console, thus essentially creating a pipeline that allows the attacker supplied command to execute even though it's in a document. That that pydoc.py uh, sort of has a security problem with it. I mean, like fundamentally. He provided a proof of concept video demonstration uh, which shows how he's able to trick that event into call the, uh, the on mouse over event into calling a specific function uh, within the Python file which then executed the payload that he'd provided through a Windows command line and showed no indication, no warning dialogue of any kind to the to the user. Uh, and he didn't really have great success. Uh, we've talked before about the problems that researchers have. Uh, some researchers have even been grumbly about uh you know, like how difficult it has been to to report problems. There was a little bit of that. He said, at first I reported it via the LibreOffice Bugzilla system. Apparently for security issues, it's better, he said, to send an email to office security at lists.freedesktop.org. He said, but I didn't know that. Uh, in fact, you know, we've talked about the the initiative for there to be some sort of consistent reporting path independent of organization, some way for people who discover vulnerabilities to be able, you know, like to, to like know who to talk to, uh, especially if, you know, you're not doing this all the time. It takes, takes some digging around. Um, he said, anyway, so my bugzilla report got closed, but I convinced them to have another look. The bug was picked up and moved to a thread via office security at, lists.freedesktop.org, which is where it should have gone. He said the issue was verified and fixed quite quickly. Um, However, so that was on the LibreOffice side. OpenOffice confirmed via email that they have a problem, that that they recognize there's a problem, but OpenOffice does not allow the the passing of parameters. So his proof of concept doesn't work as it was dis- as it was developed for LibreOffice, um, but the path traversal is still there and can be abused to execute Python script from another location on a local file system. So uh, at this point, I would opt for LibreOffice if I if I had a choice because you know those guys jumped on it and actually fixed the problem. 
So, you know, no, no real more big message there beside the beside the fact that uh, if you are losing using LibreOffice, you want you want to just check for an update, which uh, is waiting, depending upon how long it's been.